Sorry, gotta go. Be in page. Oh, look, you put my chair backwards so I can face the wall. <laughs> Council, just a reminder you're on live stream and the microphones are all live right now. Some of them are on, so just making sure. All right, I'm going to call to order the regular council meeting here on Monday, May the 16th at the WC O'Neill Arena Complex. Uh, we are uh, obviously attending in person, which is great, but we're also uh, streaming through Facebook and through Zoom, and our good friend CHCO TV are here as well. Uh, so first of all, I'll get into the recording of attendance. I note that all members of council are in attendance. I see uh, Councillor Heenan is uh, joining us virtually. So thank you very much, uh, Councillor Heenan, for doing so. And to start, I want to recognize that we are on the unceded traditional territory of the Beskatumogadi people. And I'll be looking for a mover to approve the agenda as, uh, or sorry, mover, there we go. Uh, Councillor Blanchard, a seconder, at Deputy Mayor Akaji. Um, discussion. I just uh, actually was wondering, Council, there was a, a late email that uh, came in. I was wondering if we'd be all right with calling it a friendly amendment to move, uh, I guess it's 6-2, uh, which is the PED 220506. I think that there is a, a need to go to closed session before discussing that one in light of uh, an email that came through this afternoon. So if everyone would entertain that as a friendly amendment, anyone concerned over that? Seeing none, so we'll call that a friendly amendment. Uh, so at this point, uh, unless there's any other discussion, I'll call uh, call for the motion. All in favor of approving the agenda, please signify by saying aye. And that is everybody. So the agenda has been approved. Disclosure of conflict of interest. Does anyone have any this evening? Seeing none. Um, so at this point, uh, we are jumping into the presentations for this evening. And I see we have a, a special guest, uh, but uh, Diane Hall is also joining uh, Jackson uh, Levitt uh, for a presentation uh, and proclamation on Easter Seals Red Shirt Day, which is June 1st of 2022. So the floor is yours. Oh, perfect. That's all right. Yep, we'll get you to come up to the mic just so it gets caught for Councillor Heenan. Okay. Um, if I take some pictures? Take as many as you'd like. <laughs> this is my better side. Um, good evening, everyone, and thanks for having us here. We're pretty excited to uh, share Red Shirt Day with you. I'm the director of Easter Seals New Brunswick, and this year we're celebrating our 100th anniversary in New Brunswick, um, but it's all across Canada. We've been and we have good company where Canadian tires 100 years and Jaguars 100 years. So um, I guess we're all getting up there. <laughs> uh, one of our annual events is held on June 1st and it's called Red Shirt Day. Red Shirt Day is a national day of action for accessibility and inclusion. A day when people all across Canada come together and wear red in schools, workplaces, communities uh, to create awareness with the display of solidarity. We thank you for declaring June 1st, St. Andrew's Red Shirt Day. And in case you haven't, uh, you haven't missed seeing Jackson, <laughs> um, uh, he was zooming around his uh, bicycle in St. Andrews. I'd like to introduce him now because Jackson is not only the ambassador of Easter Seals uh, New Brunswick, but he is the ambassador for Red Shirt Day across Canada and will be seen by all Easter Seals. <laughs> um, and <laughs> Um, Diana, which shirt? <laughs> okay, so we, uh, Jackson would like to present the mayor with a red shirt to wear on Red Shirt Day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's perfect. Everything's red and white. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. So on, on red shirt day, Jackson and all his schoolmates are going to have a red shirt courtesy of Easter Seals and we're going to be walking with them. So we'll see you on June 1st, I hope. <laughs> We'll go a little out of order. Uh, the package uh, available, but right off the agenda, there's a motion related to the, this particular presentation. I thought it'd be good to take care of it. Certainly, Your Worship, I'd be happy to. Under the Rec and Community Services Committee, uh, myself being the chair, the reference number is RCS 220506, and the date is the 10th of May, 2022, submitted by myself. And the subject is Diane Hall and Jackson Levitt presentation and proclamation on Easter Seals Red Shirt Day, June 1st, 2022. And the background reads Council has been provided a presentation from Diane Hall and Jackson Levitt on the Easter Seals Red Shirt Day, June 1st, 2022. It is recommended that Council proclaim June 1st as St. Andrew's Red Shirt shirt day for 2022 and the motion reads the council proclaims june 1st 2022 as saint andrew's red shirt day for easter seals in new brunswick thank you very much council Gushel, a seconder for that motion deputy mayor akaji any discussion seeing none call the question all in favor of that motion please signify by saying aye aye, aye. and that is everybody so uh i'm happy to see that pass so uh, first, this is uh, the Town of St. Andrews resolution on the Easter Seals Red Shirt Day, whereas 2022 marks the 100th anniversary of Easter Seals supporting the quality of life for children and adults with disabilities. Whereas June 1st marks Red Shirt Day in Canada, a day of action for accessibility and inclusion. Whereas Easter Seals, New Brunswick and the Town of St. Andrews recognize that wearing red on June 1st encourages a commitment to inform and educate ourselves on issues related to disabilities and to try to remove barriers in our schools, workplaces and communities, ensuring full participation for all. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town of St. Andrews hereby proclaims June 1st, 2022 as the Town of St. Andrews Red Shirt Day. Now, therefore, I, Brad Henderson, Mayor of the Town of St. Andrews, support the proclamation of the Town of St. Andrews Red Shirt Day of June 1st, 2022, which will be signed here on May 16th, 2022. In the witness whereof, I have set my hand and caused the seal of mayorality for the Town of St. Andrews to be affixed here too. So I have a copy of it right here, Jackson, and I'll happily sign that proclamation and the copy for you. And I just wanted to say how proud the town is actually to have you as an ambassador not just for St. Andrews not just for the province but for Red Shirt Day across Canada I can't think of a better ambassador and we're so lucky to have you part of our community so thanks for coming in here today all right so we'll move to hard act to follow um, but we do have Caroline Walker and Peggy Hogarth that are doing a presentation on By the Sea Butterflies Garden Project, which we're excited for. Thank you, Your Worship. Good evening, councillors. We're looking at a PowerPoint presentation about butterfly ways. The David Suzuki Foundation has established the Butterfly Way Project. It's a volunteer-driven campaign that aims to create networks of butterfly-friendly habitat in communities throughout Canada. This is the sign that you will see on uh, gardens that are part of our group. The St. Andrews by the Sea Butterfly Way is a volunteer group established this year and our goal in 2022 is to encourage safe habitats for wild pollinators to restore the health of our ecosystem, to create a butterfly way, which is a network of 12 plus gardens of native plants, shrubs and trees in our community, to raise awareness among citizens and the community and to inspire change. Next picture up, I believe is a before and after photograph of, we're still waiting for the images, but- My apologies, for some reason it's not coming up here, but it is streaming to Facebook, so. We'll continue, okay. Uh, what you might be looking at is a photo, a before and after photo of a butterfly way, a garden way that uh, after it's been loved by butterfly way gardeners, um, native plants, trees, and shrubs have been added. Wild pollinators are vital 
They include butterflies, moths, wild bees, other insects, and hummingbirds. They are essential for the health of the ecosystem. Butter butterflies play an important role pollinating flowers, especially red or yellow ones with a strong scent and that have a large amount of nectar, an important part of the butterfly, way, uh, the butterfly diet. For example, cardinal flowers, cone flowers, milkweed, columbine. Wild bees are key pollinators with over 800 species. Research has shown that the presence of wild bees increases yields of many crops. Hummingbirds are the primary birds to play a role in pollination in North America. Insects are uh, food for, butter, for hummingbirds, as well as fruit trees, fruit flies, uh, native plants such as milkweed, columbine, hyssop, um, and many others. You may not be aware, but insects are in decline worldwide. As the foundation of our ecosystem, insects have declined by more than 40% in our lifetime. This is in uh, North America and in Western Europe. One in four insect species is in danger. The rusty patch bumblebee, formerly one of the most common in North America, is now on the brink of extinction. Habitat loss through clear cutting, pesticide use, monoculture and urban development contribute to the decline in insect numbers. Climate change, light pollution and introduced or invasive species, for example, the emerald ash borer, the Asian longhorn beetle, etc., cause further decline. New Brunswick butterflies include the, the swallowtail and the scudder. The Canadian tiger swallowtail feeds on the nectar of goldenrod, daisies, clover, lilac, sweetgrass, tufted vetch, etc. Pink edge sulfur butterfly or the scudder feed on nectar of orange hawkweed and bristly sarsaparilla. Butterflies and moths need a place to land on the flowers they visit. So they prefer broad flat leaf flowers, for example, daisies. Since they have long straw-like mouth parts, they can suck nectar from deep within the flower. Research has shown that our gardens can be a vital refuge for many insect species. Urban areas are growing across Canada and North America. Improving their value for pollinators is critical for any strategy to protect and increase pollinators. Since 2017, the David Suzuki Foundation has helped establish more than 75 butterfly ways in communities across Canada with more than 6,500 new urban gardens. Insects are amazing and they work and the work they do helps all of us. For example, you might not be aware that monarch, monarch butterflies migrate thousands of kilometers. The silk moth produces silk fiber. The dung beetle contributes to decomposition in soil. The cochineal scale insect is used for dye production. The fruit fly is essential in science research. And the alfalfa looper moth contributes to vaccine development, including the, cor the coronavirus vaccine. We have a modest goal, the four butterflyway rangers that represent St. Andrews, Peggy Hogarth, Sue Rangeley, and Helen Stevenson and myself to find creative ways to establish at least a dozen new garden areas filled with native plants. In other words, a local butterfly way. In 2022, the year of the garden, join us to support pollinators and help create a butterfly way in St. Andrews and surroundings. And it doesn't have to be a garden. It can be a, a, pot, a pot of native plants. It can be a hanging basket. It can be a window, uh, a window garden. Be a host. Some of the native New Brunswick plants, shrubs and trees for pollinators include aster, goldenrod, black-eyed Susan, milkweed, blue vervain. For woodland gardens, you might find tr violet, trillium, bloodroot, hepatica, American trout lily. In wetlands, joe pie weed, blue flag iris, pickerel weed, marsh marigold, white water lilies. Many of these are already in existence in our gardens and um, the byways and shrublands. Uh, native shrubs include serviceberry, chokeberry, dogwood, currant, red elderberry, meadowsweet. 
Native trees include mountain maple, striped maple, willow, staghorn, sumac, mountain ash, hawthorn, birch, et cetera, et cetera. So what can you do? You can help us increase awareness of the importance of native pollinators, including butterflies and wild bees. You can foster growth of pollinator habitat, gardens and spaces within the town. You can contribute to a healthy and sustainable planet. The image you're missing now is a butterfly way parking only. Uh, we would like to thank you very much and encourage you to check out Facebook and our Butterfly Ways uh, website. Both of those are on um, the PowerPoint presentation. Finally, thank you very much for allowing us to present to you today. You might uh, notice on our Facebook and website pages um, more information about the project. We'll also be um, presenting at the June plant sale that the By the Sea plant sale, plant uh, garden group, uh, planters group, excuse me, uh, has June 4th. It'll be at the United Church and we'll have native plants and more for sale as well as more information about pollinators. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Before uh, we let you go, I was wondering if Council had any uh, any questions on everything. It certainly was good from an awareness standpoint for both Council and the public, but did anyone have any questions? Good question. I believe it starts at 10. We're setting up at 8, but I believe it starts at 10 a.m. There'll be information on uh, the By the Seed Garden Club web, uh, Facebook. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Well, thank you very much for the presentation. I know that you've been busy today dropping signs off. Uh, which, uh, I was fortunate <laughs> yes. enough to get one for Kingsbury. You might but... see some of these signs at our honorable uh, mention garden, the Butterfly, Way, the Butterfly Garden at Kingsbury Gardens. Yep. And these are the signs. You might also see them around town. People already have established gardens. We're very close to achieving our minimum goal of 12 native gardens. And we're looking for anybody else to join us. Perfect. Well, thank you thank again. You. Really appreciate the time uh, this evening. All right, council. So that gets us through the presentations for this evening. Uh, great to always have a couple of those. So thanks uh, to everyone who presented. So uh, we don't have to worry about minutes. We do that uh, at, the, at the previous one of our, of our bi-monthly meetings. Uh, no communications in the staff report we did last meeting. So we're jumping right into the introduction consideration, passing of bylaws and motions. And at this point, I will pass it over to Deputy Mayor Akaji for Finance and Administration. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, FA220507, um, appointment of the Charlotte County Hospital Foundation Incorporated Board of Trustee Member. And the background is this. The Town of St. Andrews received a letter from the Charlotte County Hospital Foundation Incorporated regarding the upcoming vacation, vaca vacant position from St. Andrews on their Board of Trustees. Councillor Lee Heenan has indicated that he will not be continuing on the board due to his time constraints. The seat is available, the seat available is for a three year term position. The member selected has to be appointed by the Council of the Town of St. Andrews. The foundation is asking for an appointed member to their board no later than May 30th, 2022. And this is the date set for their AGM. The action and the motion is that council appoints Glenn Harris to the Charlotte County Hospital Foundation Incorporated to serve on the board of trustees for a three year term from 2022 to 2025 on behalf of the town of St. Andrews. And I so move this, but before I, I do that, I'd like to thank Councillor Heenan for his work on the, on the board. Uh, he's represented St. Andrews uh, for his term and we'd like to thank you for your um, very conscientious work. Thanks very much. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Akerji, a seconder for that motion. We've got Councillor Heenan, just because I saw it on the screen first. Um, <laughs> Councillor Neal, see that? <laughs> Any other discussion on this motion? Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. That is everybody, so that has been carried. 
Uh, thank you again to Deputy Mayor Akerji's points. Thank you, uh, Councillor Heenan, for your service for the community. And also thank you to uh, Glenn Harris for stepping up and uh, signing up to uh, represent St. Andrews as the Charlotte County Hospital obviously is a very important uh, asset for the region. Uh, I would hate to see this region without such an asset. So thank you, Glenn Harris. Uh, at this point, uh, we are jumping over to Public Works. Uh, but before we get into a motion with Councillor Blanchard, there is a water meter program update. Uh, which is in page 16 of your council report. Uh, Mr. Spear, I don't know if you wanted to comment briefly on it. Probably would be the best way to go about this. Yeah, I think so, Your Worship. Just to make sure council's up to date on this. But as you're aware, a couple of three years ago, we switched from um, consumption-based metering for all residents to flat-based for most residents, plus going to commercial or to for volume users, it was still on a metered basis. But uh, for a lot of reasons, including the fact that it... Uh, encourages conservation, plus uh, for a fairness thing, we're decided we should go back to, um, to a metered program for all our residents. And so in uh, last year's budget and this year's budget, you set aside $50,000 a year in order to do that. Uh, there's two big things you have to do. There's about 160 meters that have to be replaced right away. Um, but we're also going to buy um, special wands that are plugged into the uh, each of the meters that'll take the data from the household back to the town office, uploaded to a computer. So there's a lot of writing going on in the old way. Everything was written by hand and which as you can imagine led to a lot of errors because there's, there's about 960 meters in town. And so we're going through that process this year. We've already let some of our residents know that the public works uh, actually the utility staff are going to be going and looking at their meters and making sure they're up to date, the 160 that we have concerns with. And then this fall, they're going to go back and hit every meter and do a baseline reading so that in the fall of, or sorry, in the spring of 2023, we'll be back to full consumption reading is what the plan is right now. Uh, all the meters are purchased. Uh, we're having a demo on a couple of different ones and software just to make sure it's in place, but staff have already started uh, making going home to home for those ones that we have concerns to replace the meters and making note of it. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mr. Spear, for that update. I don't think we have much to discuss because I think we all would probably agree that uh, pay for what you use is what we should be encouraging, and it's a more fair way for our citizens to pay their water bills and I, you know, obviously conservation, all that stuff. So that's a Really wonderful news. I know it was a big expense for the municipality, but it's the right thing to do. So does anyone else have anything to add on that? But it's, I appreciate the update. All right, so let's go on to the next uh, motion. So I'll pass it over to you, Councilor Blanchard. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so reference number PW220509, uh, dates May the 9th, 2022. Uh, subject was acceptance of Eastern Charlotte Waterways climate change climate change in the Shamcook watershed, updated predictions and their implications. So the background on that, <laughs> excuse me, the town of St. Andrews received a presentation at the May 2nd, 20, or the May 2nd 2022 uh, regular council meeting from Lee Penny of Eastern Charlotte Waterways for the climate change in the Shamcook watershed, updated predictions and their implications from an environmental trust fund grant from 2021, 2022. The presentation highlighted uh, background information on the project, description of the watershed, updates on climate projections, review of existing data <clears throat> and predicted changes, including flow dynamics, cyanobacteria bloom, should be blooms, I think, and not booms, uh, natural, animal, and man-made issues, intensity, duration, frequency curves, and drone footage, and then also the implications. So with the completion of the study and ongoing works with the Department of, of the Environment for the province of New Brunswick, council should accept the report as presented. And the motion is that council accepts a report from Eastern Charlotte Waterways for the climate change in the Shamcook watershed, update, update predictions and their implications report funded by the Environmental Trust Fund grant 2021-2022 from the province of New Brunswick and I so move. Thank you, Councillor Blanchard, seconder for that motion. We've got Councillor Neal and discussion on that one. Seeing none, I will... Call the question. All those in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. That is everybody. So uh, that has been approved. Thank you to Eastern Charlotte Waterways for their work on that particular 
uh, presentation and of course uh, report to go along with it. Um, so at this point, uh, we're jumping off that. We're now skipping right ahead to business, tourism, heritage and culture, uh, and uh, it will be Councillor Hurdle. Thank you, Worship. I don't actually have a motion in the package. I uh, think this goes to Mr. Spear. It's yeah, correct. I thought it wouldn't be a motion, but you're right. It's just an update on the report. Uh, Thank you, Worship. Um, I was just to follow up, I guess, with council. So uh, we've had a request from um, Jeff Holmes with the civic, or not civic, well, with civic trust and, and the Charlotte County Archives uh, requesting um, that janitorial services be provided to the courthouse this year. This was not a budgeted item. Um, so we're just looking for direction from council. Uh, primarily right now from a municipal organization standpoint, we don't have any internal use for it, meaning council has elected not to meet there anymore and staff uses the space or the arena space up stores to meet. So it's just outside organizations that are using it. But having said that, they'll be running it for tours during the summer um, that they do. And I think either through volunteers and or maybe some summer staff that, uh, that are br brought in through grants. So in looking at past costs, it'd be approximately $75 a week to have it cleaned over probably about 17 weeks. So we're talking $1,300 plus probably a couple of hundred dollars for what we call it a deep cleaning because it hasn't been uh, you know, really cleaned since this time last year. So I've talked about some other in-kind services we're already providing to the, um, the, the archives and things. So- Sorry. So I guess the question is, did you want us to um, authorize the use of this cleaning for this year or, or ask them that if they're gonna be the ones using it, that they should be uh, you know, still rent free and everything, but if they're gonna be using the facility that they should provide the janitorial. Council over to you, it's an unbudgeted item. Uh, staff report is attached. I, I believe they're recommending that the actual, um, uh, I guess you can say the ones that are providing the tours of the archives, that's safe to say. The archives provides the, uh, the cleaning as they require it. Uh, but over to you, um, whatever council consensus is, I'm fine with. Um, do you want the town to uh, pay for it or would you like uh, town staff to, to work with them where they figure out their own internal solution since as a town, we're not really using it. I think it again comes back to a discussion that hopefully we're having soon is what is the long-term plan for that courthouse? Like, we were looking at budget time and we said that we weren't going to do certain projects because we didn't know what it was going to be. This is almost feels a little bit on a more minor level, like a same conversation. Um, but with that being said, if it is open to the public, it is a representation of the town. You may want it clean in a way that you want it. So council, I'll look for some direction from any member if they have a, have a an opinion on this particular uh, staff report. Councilor Hill. Hey, thank you. Just a question, uh, Your Worship. Uh, if we know, uh, was the courthouse in jail awarded seed student for the summer time? Was it one or two? Do we know if they've got two employees? I don't. From what I understand, and maybe the deputy mayor knows because of her connections. No. So, um, from my understanding, I thought they had a part-time manager there. However, that's right. And I don't know the Canada summer jobs. To the best of my knowledge, haven't been awarded yet, okay. and I don't know if they got seed applicants i could follow up with them or find out for sure i, I don't want it to skew anyone's because i'm not 100 sure but i did have the opportunity to have dinner with franklin cardi and i think he alluded that they did get a seed student or two uh, but again i don't want that to skew your deliberation because i'm not 100 percent sure on that anyone else <laughs> council heenan thank you Yes, your worship and council. Um, it sounds like we're nickel and, and diming this, but I believe that we give enough to the courthouse and the people that use it. Uh, we heat it, et cetera. And I mean, it, it's rightfully fair that the people who use it pay to keep it clean. Um, I mean, if we were to use it for an event, we would have to pay to clean it. So I'm for the fact that whoever's making the money from it with the tours, et cetera, or the seed student or something, I, I just feel that 
I think they get a, you know, they're getting enough. I actually realize that the courthouse is representative of the town, but the thing is, it's not going to uh, make or break an organization to pay to clean up a little bit every week. That's just my thoughts. Thank you, Councillor Heenan. Uh, anyone else? I'll go back to you one second. Anyone else, Councillor Hurdle? Other than Councillor Hurdle? Councillor Neal? Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I would tend to agree. Um, I think, again, there's got to be a little bit of an onus on the user group here to uh, to help out with the cleaning. And again, just looking at the staff report, um, I guess my initial thought was that it was, you know, it was a pretty fair suggestion, you know, even if we were to pick up sort of that initial cleaning to get things going, but then they take care of it for the rest of the season. Thank you, Councillor Neal. Um, anyone else? Councillor Hurl, I didn't see your deputy mayor, actually go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I think, as Councillor Heenan said, it is a, an important asset to the town. And as Councillor Neal suggested, that maybe we play, pay the initial cleaning uh, for you know, getting it ready, and then they look after it from then on. I would be all for that. Thank you. So we've got a proposal for deep cleaning, followed by them. The town covers the deep cleaning. They do the regular after that. Councillor Hurley, I didn't notice your hand earlier. I just want to give other, so go ahead. Thanks, I just propose that uh, deep clean, yes, but maybe we table the discussion until we know whether or not they have a seed student. Okay, sounds good. Um, so uh, everyone else is good. So what I'll do is uh, um, I'll see first of all, who would like to uh, pay for the deep cleaning and encourage them to do the cleaning moving forward after for their own use. Um, I'll get consensus on that. and. And if we don't have enough, the alternative will be the deep cleaning, followed by a follow-up conversation later. So I guess first is who would like to see a deep cleaning followed by them picking up the bill after that point, uh, just signify by saying aye. Okay, and uh, those that would like to see it a deep cleaning, just for clarification, a deep cleaning, and then we bring it up later, just a quick show of, of hands for the, for the remaining bill. Okay, so I think we have consensus that we will take the deep cleaning, um, Mr. Spear, and then uh, after that, if they want to continue using regular tours that through their, uh, their own means, whether it be students or their own staff uh, to, to presume it. So thank you, Council, for weighing in on that. Uh, at this point, uh, we are switching over to Recreation and Community Services with Councillor Gubichel, uh, and uh, I'll pass it over to you at this point. Thank you, Worship. Uh, reference number PED 220303, submitted by myself. And the subject is bylaw number 22 03, a bylaw to regulate non vehicular transportation in the town of St. Andrews, first reading. And the background reads, and I'll, I'll go quickly. At the regular council meeting on Tuesday, April 19, 2022, and May 2, 2022, council discussed the bylaw. 01-5, a bylaw regulating the use of skateboard scooters and inline skates within the town of St. Andrews. Council discussed topics for safety for pedestrians and users, youth and adults, active transportation, forms of non-vehicular transportation, and liability regarding the uses of these forms of transportation along Water Street. Council directed staff to bring back a new version of a bylaw that would be reflective of varying types of non-vehicular transportation used in the community, which includes person-powered and electric-powered devices. Staff has reviewed several bylaws from across New Brunswick with a focus on St. John, Fredericton, and Sackville, and the Motor Vehicle Act of the province of New Brunswick. Staff feels the bylaw presented to council encompasses the views and discussion of council. And the action reads, or the motion reads, the council grants leave for first reading of bylaw number 22-03, a bylaw to regulate non-vehicular transportation in the town of St. Andrews. Thank you. Could I have a mover for that motion? Deputy Marakaji, a seconder for that motion. Councillor Blanchard. Oh, yeah. I, he, he Sorry, I was rubbing my nose. Okay, I just wanted to say, <laughs> he didn't say so move, so I just wanted to, to make sure. So we, if you're good with that, then Councillor Gumichel, seconded by Deputy Marakaji. We're now open for discussion. Uh, before you, Council, is a, a new bylaw. Um, I believe Mr. Knopper looked at other bylaws across the province, which there is a number. The major changes on this would be that it, first of all, provides definitions, which is one thing we heard from Council. Uh, the other thing is a lot of other places did have uh, a reference in regards to helmets. Uh, and the other major change would be that uh, you could say that uh, inline skates, scooters, and skateboards would be allowed in downtown St. Andrews on the streets, which we've confirmed that there's no legal issue with that. Um, so the bylaw before you would be what we would call perhaps maybe a, a compromise. But with that being said, um, we certainly can um, 
not go this route, we can just repeal the existing bylaw still. So just to let council know that you do have that option as well still. Um, is there anything I missed on that, Mr. Knopper? Because just because it is a new bylaw before council. No, Your Worship, you've covered virtually all the discussion topics that were brought forward by council during the last two meetings and what was incorporated into this bylaw. Sounds good. Um, and I do know that there was also the alternative of making it seasonality as well, which we could consider as well. So council, uh, I'll open the floor up to you before we, uh, we go to a vote uh, on this particular motion. Uh, the floor is open. I see uh, Councilor Gumashell, then we'll go Councilor Blanchard. Uh, sorry to jump in there. Point of order, wouldn't we need to repeal the uh, existing bylaw before we brought forward a new bylaw? No, what we're essentially doing is changing the bylaw. Is that correct? Or Mr. Knopper, should we be repealing the old one at the same time? Through you, Your Worship, there's actually a section at the end of the bylaw that actually talks about repeal provision on page 58 of your document. And it actually states that when this new bylaw, if council moves it forward, automatically would repeals. automatically repeal the other bylaw. Perfect. That's a good, good question, Council Grubishaw, because we, I don't think we've seen one like this necessarily that way. Um, but that makes sense. Uh, Your Worship, just so Council knows, there are several bylaws of the town of St. Andrews that have followed this procedure, including like our water wastewater bylaw, when it was fully redone, so there's no it was repeal as soon as it was in place. Very similar would be like our zoning bylaws, as soon as a new one is in place, the other ones would be in place. Perfect. So it's just uh, for no transition period, I guess, for, for debate, I guess. So uh, Council Michelle, is that it for you? or Council Bl yeah, Thank you. Thank you, Council Blanchard. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Um, thank you to town staff for preparing this. I, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm generally in support of this uh, as it's written now. I just had a question on the, um, cause it does add, <laughs> excuse me, helmets as a requirement now. Um, is that standard for most of the municipalities that you looked at or is that, or, or, I'm just curious to know what, what the situation was there. So through you, your worship, uh, under the motor vehicle act of the province of New Brunswick, it actually specifically states cyclists and bicyclists need to be wearing a helmet at all times at all ages. What we've seen with other bylaws, St. John, Sackville of being the most recent, they incorporated it for all their forms of transportation that to ensure safety of their of their citizens and, and use on their roads. Anyone else? Councilor Hurdle, then we'll go to Deputy Mayor Akinji. Just a point of information, uh, Mr. Knopper. Um, so the province's rule would, would be in place regardless of what we would decide in the, in today on this. So it, we, have no, we have no power to decide on bicycle helmets. Uh, through your worship, that's correct. It's actually stipulated right in the motor vehicle bylaw uh, for them. I could look up the exact section for you, but it stipulates that anybody under the age of 16 must be like parents and guardians must ensure that a proper CSA approved helmet is chin strapped and on. And it actually indicates anybody over the age of 16 regardless of who you are, still need to be wearing a helmet while cycling. Thank you. Perfect. And I'm assuming it's in here because it would give town bylaw enforcement a, a tool in order to enforce it as well as through provincial law. Uh, that is correct, Your yeah. Worship. Okay. Um, Deputy Mayor Akaji. Thank you, Your Worship and Council. Um, thank you, staff, for doing such an intricate um, revision of this bylaw that we've had quite a bit of discussion on it. Um, and uh, giving us the definitions is wonderful. Like there is no question as to what is what. And um, enfor enforcing the helmet law, I think is a great thing to do for, because that does give our bylaw enforcement officer the chance to um, make sure that they are riding safely. It doesn't request that they're wearing all the knee pads and everything else, but at least their head will be protected, which would be a good idea. Thank you very much for all your hard work. Thank you. Any other member of council? Councillor Neal. Yes, thank you, Worship. Um, again, thank you to staff for the work on this. I think they did a good job in capturing everything that we had been discussing. Um, I just want to go back a bit to sort of my original reasoning for supporting the repeal of the original bylaw. Um, originally, my thought process there was, again, listening to the debate we had in the last two meetings, um, we seem to be focused very much on uh, one group versus the other. And the reason that I was fairly supportive of repealing the original bylaw was again, because I was hoping we could get to a spot that was more inclusive for everybody. Um, you know, I didn't really, I wasn't comfortable with the, you know, the focus on kids on skateboards versus senior citizens. Um, I think we should be striving towards something that is more inclusive for everybody and their interests. Uh, and this, 
new version to me, um, although it's somewhat more restrictive, again, I think it did capture a bit more of what we were trying to do. Um, I do note that bicycles have now been added to this, which again, I know I asked several questions as to why bicycles weren't added on the original bylaw. And that was by no means me supporting that. Um, I was just trying to get clarification for it. Um, with regards to the helmets, again, I'm a strong proponent of public safety, but at the same time, being that it's already captured under the New Brunswick uh, Motor Vehicle Act, which does come with a fine, uh, which is $21 by the province, it seems again that you could now be hit with a $21 fine by the province and a $50 fine by the town. Um, so I had a little bit of an issue with that. Uh, and again, reading through it, you know, I like the fact that we have separated sidewalks from the road, uh, again, allowing use there. We had a fair bit of consultation on this one. Um, we've had letters in support and against allowing these activities on sidewalks. Uh, you know, again, a lot of them, when I was reading them, were focused again on the fact that we have now added a skateboard, uh, skateboard park to me, which you know, somewhat alleviates the problem of skateboards downtown or the scooters. Um, the other argument I heard was that the sidewalks weren't safe enough for them. I think, again, that, again, alleviates part of the problem. Again, if it's not that comfortable to ride on, I don't think people are going to want to do it. Um, we've also had this recent uh, survey of the Chamber of Commerce, which, again, surprisingly to me, um, was very much in favor of allowing these activities on the sidewalks uh, and, you know, against the $50 fine and, you know, in favor of repealing the original bylaw. So, you know, the, the helmet issue to me, um, again, I'm all for the public safety, um, but I also feel that there has to be an onus on, you know, some of the users and their parents for the really younger users. Uh, and I'm not sure that this is something as a town that we want to take on. I will note some of those other communities, St. John Fredericton, um, they have a lot more infrastructure than we do when it comes to enforcement. Uh, I can see this being just a nonstop issue for our bylaw enforcement in town. Um, they could probably literally fill their days up all summer long just chasing kids without helmets on. Uh, and the last thing I'll mention, again, looking at the new version that was that was given to us um, my initial thought was that it could basically start section two could basically start at 2.4 in my opinion uh, if we did away with 2.1 2.2 and 2.3 uh, again i think that is a much more inclusive approach uh, it's something we've talked about we talked about it at the start of this meeting it was noted in you know our spring newsletter that we are transitioning to new recreation opportunities to be more inclusive of all ages and abilities. Uh, and I think that would definitely put us in the right direction. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, thank you. I'm going to try to, uh, to paraphrase that. So basically what you're proposing is to amend the, basically amend the, uh, the bylaw, the motion to omit sections 2.1, 2.2 and 2.3. Is that correct? Right. All right, so uh, council, I'll give you just a moment to digest that, uh, just because I will be looking for consensus, but quick summary would be that uh, it essentially in 2.1 would allow for these to be on sidewalks. 2.2 would basically uh, remove the helmet restriction and 2.3 would uh, at that point, um, again, a helmet and it has to do with parents and guardians, correct? Correct. So uh, I have uh, Councillor Neal, if I could say, I'm moving to um, amend uh, the motion with that particular change to the bylaw. I'll be looking for a seconder for Councillor Neal's comments. But Councillor Gumbichel, um, now we can open that up for discussion on Councillor Neal's comments, or of course we can go to the vote. Uh, just on that, is there anyone that would like to have anything to say on Councillor Neal's comments before we go to the vote? Or the amendment, I should say, not so much as comments. Just Councillor Heenan, then we'll go to Councillor Blanchard. Thank you, Your Worship and Council. As you know, I've taken a little heat on the paper from all of this because, uh, et cetera, of my standpoint on it. Um, 
when we really get down to thinking and looking at this whole thing, we're talking four blocks um, within the town center. Um, I'm just still concerned. Um, I'm not sure if anyone was downtown the day that we had the buses in with the tour buses from the cruise ship. But in those four blocks, it was congested and crowded, and this is in May. So we just have to, as a council, really feel that we're doing correct what our plans are and our motion is on this. Uh, I do agree with uh, Councillor Neal that the helmet is not really necessary in this because as mentioned, it's part of the motor vehicle um, initiative. So putting it in is redundant as secondly, but I just wanted to point that out and thank you for allowing me the time. Thank you, Councillor Heenan. Any, uh, Councillor Blanche, I believe I saw your hand. Uh, yes, Your Worship, thanks. Um, I appreciate the uh, Councillor Neal's comments. Um, but I don't actually mind the idea, again, which we talked about a bit of a compromise, I don't mind the idea of keeping uh, uh, skateboards, bicycles, all that kind of stuff off the sidewalks in the downtown uh, historic business district. I'm all about, like to me, it was always about promoting active transportation. So being able to <laughs> ride those things downtown to get, you know, and, and move throughout the downtown, to me, it was, was always the ultimate goal here. Um, and I, I certainly do appreciate the uh, the survey that came in from the uh, the Chamber of Commerce that we received yesterday or today, I can't remember now, uh, which did show a majority of the business owners downtown are actually supportive of repealing the old bylaw uh, and, and allowing those uh, the means of transportation downtown. But there was a portion also that was opposed to repealing. So I want to recognize that as well. Um, with regards to amending the full amendment to what Councillor Neal has suggested, um, again, I don't mind. I actually would prefer to keep 2.1, so I'd probably have to vote against the amendment as a whole. Um, I recognize, like I said, the redundancy of the, the helmet issue. Um, again, one of my questions I was going to ask uh, originally was, was actually answered by Councillor Neal. Was, I, I was wondering what the fine was under the Motor, Ve Motor Vehicles Act, and $21 versus our $50. I don't think that necessarily jives up. I'd actually like to see if we are going to have this as part of our bylaws. Um, it, it does talk about, you know, if you pay the $50 to the town, you can, before charges or before you have to go to court, you can avoid the, you can avoid going to court. Well, I just like to see us sort of maybe fall closer in line with actually what the province, the provincial fine is maybe somewhere around 20 to $25 would make more sense. But um, I also recognize that it could potentially be a, a large issue for, for our town uh, bylaw officer to enforce this effectively. Um, and, and again, if you can't enforce it effectively, then, then why put it in place? Um, so I, I do sympathize there, but as a whole, because of the first 2.1, I, I actually support, I think that, so as, as, as a whole, I think I'd have to probably vote against unless it was, unless it was amended further. So, so thanks. Council Blanchard, I, 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 uh, I think it's okay for us if, if this does get defeated, if it does, um, to amend it, um, to leave 2.1 in, and we could do a second amendment if someone wished to, to omit 2.2 and 2.3. Like I said, so, for me, either way, like I said, I, so I'm, just I'm supportive of it as it is right now. But I, like I said, I'd be open to having that discussion. We'll, we'll isolate part. those two because they're, they're two different bylaws, depending on which ones we omit, which ones we don't. Um, before I go back to Councilor Neal, is there anyone else that wanted to comment? Otherwise, I will go back to Councilor Neal. Councilor Grimichel, do you have a hand? Well, sure. I'll comment. Um, this whole thing, I, I don't think I would have brought it forward, except uh, I thought... I thought uh, I thought we had the votes to uh, repeal this in the first place. I I, um, I'm, I apologize. It's not the best look for uh, for our community to to pit users against each other. Um, uh, Councillor Heenan, um, uh, based on the, the some of the the four letters uh, against it that we got after our last uh, email after our last meeting, um, said that you know. Uh, uh, fairly said that he didn't want to feel responsible for things. That's a that's a fair that's a fair comment. I I, I question uh, I question uh, some of the letters. Um, I think uh, um, uh, particularly the one from a former uh, former law enforcement here in town. We we don't have I, I I don't know of any um, statistics for accidents. I don't think we've had one accident. People talk about oh there were accidents and oh there were this. Well there's there's no nobody can seem to actually find one. Um, so I, I think we're a bit, that was a bit misleading and uh, I, I really would like to see the whole thing 
um, repealed. But thank you to Councillor Neal for coming up with a potential solution, having the leadership to see that if we take out 212223 and just go with 24, 24.1 um, says that exercise and due care to the safety and safety of others shall be exercised. So basically, it would uh, save our poor bylaw enforcement officer who has to chase kids off the wharf, off the uh, front street for skateboarding. And people come up to me and, you know, they say, uh, the bylaw enforcement officer chased my kid. And I can't say, well, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's against the law. I, I try to have his back, but uh, I, I feel for him. It's not the, probably not the most fun having to chase kids around. Um, I will also add, and I mean, I could talk about this all day you know, growing up on the front street and, and um, how, you know, we want to attract people here. We want to be a vibrant town, a community, not, you know, it's not a shopping mall downtown. It's, we, we don't, uh, we don't chase people away. Um, if you go along, you know, some of those blocks like uh, the, the McGuire's have kids, the Leatherhouse has kids, the Sorensen has kids. They're all of that age to ride scooters and stuff. They should be able to play on the sidewalk and ride scooters and whatnot if there's no people like you know we, we teach kids to to be civil and to be respectful and uh, if it is you know to, to have some seniors suggest that we should be chasing kids off the front street uh, walking three abreast and some of the comments I saw in the TJ article is it's really a bad look for the town and so um, I'm sorry to have kind of brought this forward I, I, <laughs> I certainly didn't think it would take this much of our time we have many important things to do but I do feel that uh, it was necessary to speak out for, uh, for the, uh, the young people and, and other users. I mean, the town, <coughs> we, we don't have it. We don't even know how many, uh, how many skateboarding tickets we've given, you know, and I've spoken to people who've paid tickets and we don't have stats on that. So I, I just would have rather not brought any of this forward, to be honest, and just uh, continued, uh, continued to uh, go along because I don't think it's a, a good look for the town. So I, I certainly don't want to waste anybody's time, and I would re, would support the uh, two point four um, forward as suggested by Councilor Neal because I think it's a it's a pretty good compromise. Thank you. Sorry to be all over the place there, but that's okay. Um, any other member, Council? I'll go back to Councilor Neal just to make sure. Councilor Neal, go ahead. Thank you, Worship. Yeah, I'll just take a moment to clarify what I'm thinking about allow when I'm you know suggesting we allow these on the sidewalk. So essentially. In my opinion, what we're looking at here is very young kids. Um, you know, we've taken the time to survey residents uh, and got pretty much a split back of for and against. Uh, we've serviced the business community, surveyed the business community, which again are in favor of repealing it. Um, but the one group that we haven't talked to is actually the kids. So having kids myself in both the high school and the middle school, I took the opportunity to talk to them and some of their friends and of the i'm going to say about 10 kids i spoke to none of them were even aware that this bylaw existed they had no idea about it um, again it basically came into effect long before any of them could remember so again i think we have to respect a little bit of the fact that the majority of kids that are of that age are going to ride on the roads it makes far more sense for them to ride on the road than a crowded sidewalk. So really we're just coming down to, my thinking is that we're just talking about very young kids who are most likely out with their parents. Um, we add bicycles to this. I'm thinking of, you know, the five-year-old that just got a bike for his birthday and can't ride it down the sidewalk with his parents walking behind him. Um, that is where my thinking was coming when I'm, you know, in favor of allowing this on the sidewalks. I really don't think repealing this bylaw is going to result in gangs of teenagers terrorizing our sidewalks. Um, I just don't see that happening. Again, most of them aren't aware of it and they're not doing it now. So I really don't see the issue. Again, to me, we're excluding very young kids that don't have the option of riding these things on the road. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Neal. Um, anyone else? Uh... We'll go through one more round because that was Councilor Neal's second time. So we'll do one more round, then I will call the question just to keep the meeting moving forward. Um, Deputy Mayor Akerji. Thank you, Your Worship and Council. Um, I do like the changes that have been brought forward, um, but I, I, I didn't understand that it was very young children. 
I was assuming it was all the children that were going to be riding on the sidewalk. Right. And I don't I, mean to interrupt, but uh, just to be clear on that, 2.1 yeah. does not uh, does not split the age. Anyone, it's, anyone it's can, so it can be so it can be It's not just young kids, it'll be so, anyone. But I like the idea that Councillor Neal has brought forward that the young children be allowed, because I wouldn't like to see them on the road with the traffic when they are, got a new bicycle and they're not well balanced. Um, but I, I still would like to see the teenagers follow the rules of the road and be on the road. That's all I'll say. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Um, so council, keep in mind, uh, and for the public as well, that this is just first reading. It requires three readings. So no matter kind of what you decide on this one, it's gonna have a hearing of objections and there's an opportunity to amend. I am hearing a, a bit of a theme um, that we can look on maybe for another time that maybe we look at perhaps looking at an age where young kids can, and if you're an adult, go and buy, but it's a slippery slope when you get into picking an age there, it's an arbitrary number. So um, then you get into other things about some kids that need more supervision, whatever the case may be. Um, so I have a mover and a seconder for an amendment, which would uh, omit sections 2.1, 2.2 and 2.3. Um, so I will call the question. All in favor of the uh, amendment to remove those, please uh, signify by saying aye. And all those opposed? <laughs> and Councillor Blanchard. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Your Worship, I'll, uh, I'll vote in favor. Okay, so by a vote uh, of four to two, um, we will go to first reading with amend with uh, sorry that's to approve the amendment now we go back to the original motion sorry council get to do that all over again uh could i have a mover now on this one all right councillor neal and seconded by councillor gumichelle so this is the motion again probably very consistent all in favor of going to first reading signify by saying aye all those opposed seeing none um uh, did i see a hand councillor heenan at the end no, I'm fine. I was late. Okay, sounds good. So uh, that we will go to first reading then. Uh, so uh, let me just jump into the bylaw. I get myself ahead there. This is bylaw number 22-03, a bylaw to regulate the use of non-vehicular transportation within the town of St. Andrews. And I'll read it by title. One is definitions. Two is non-vehicle transportation. Three is administrative penalty. Four is repeal provision. And that is everything. So it's been read the first time on uh, May, the 16th day of May, 2022. And I know that uh, Mr. Knopper was taking notes there. So he'll make sure that the updated version is available to the public before the hearing objections, which will bring us to the actual next motion. So back to you, Councillor Gumichel. Of, uh, the, uh, Correct, that's the motion. Okay, thank you. Um, the council sets the date of Monday, June 6th at 6 30 at the WC O'Neill Arena Complex for a public hearing of objections to bylaw number 22 03, the bylaw to regulate non vehicular transportation in the town of San Andreas. Thank you. Thank you. And the seconder for that motion. I've got Deputy Mayor Akaji. Um, discussion on the hearing of objections motion. Seeing none, I will call the question. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. That is everybody. So the hearing of objections has been set for Monday, June 6, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. at the WC O'Neill Arena. All right, um, next one is we're moving ahead to planning and economic development. Uh, joining us virtually, Councillor Heenan. Thank you, Your Worship and Council. PED 2203-02, Zoning Bylaw Z22-01, third reading. The Town of St. Andrews passed the Zoning Bylaw Z21-01 in March of 2021. Over the past year, staff have been working with the bylaw and identified several changes to enhance the bylaw and encouragement of development in the community. The following processes have taken have been taken regarding zoning a bylaw 22-01. One, council has had two workshops to discuss the proposed changes with staff. Two, first reading of zoning bylaw Z22-01 happened on March the 7th, 2022. 
three, obtain views of the Planning Advisory Committee, March 16th, 2022. Four, public hearing of objections, April 4th, 2022. And finally, second reading was April the 19th, 2022. Note that the third and final reading can occur by title as posting notifications have been in place as per Community Planning Act. The motion is that council grants third and final reading of zoning bylaw Z22-01 being the zoning bylaw for the town of St. Andrews and I so move it, your worship. Thank you, Councillor Heenan. A seconder for that one, Councillor Blanchard. Uh, we'll open it up for discussion and uh, Councillor Hurdle's hand is up. Thank you, your worship. Um, as all of you know, you've heard a, a lot about me on this, uh, a lot of from me on this, uh, on this, and uh, a lot about me, goodness, a lot from me on this uh, issue. Um, and uh, obviously that there's a lot of, uh, a lot of concern, a lot of comments, a lot of uh, uh, attention uh, being paid to some of the pieces that, uh, that are coming through on this one. And, uh, um, and, I, and I've tried my best to hear from all sides on this. And one of the things I, I do believe is, is I do believe that, you know, uh, we should be moving towards a parking minimum of one lot. But at the same time, um, there's a lot of concern from the community. And the concern from the community, from my point of view, is, is not about parking necessarily. We, we, we're using the parking debate to answer a lot of other concerns that we have in our community. And I think that it's our responsibility to address those concerns, but by using the right tool for the job. So while I remain committed to, to looking at and bringing forward, uh, uh, you know, reducing parking minimums, at the same time, you know, I think that we, we need to do some, some protection in our community as well, protecting the, the aesthetic and the heritage of, of, of St. Andrews, which is obviously, you know, why many of us are here and near and dear to all of us and, and all of our hearts as well. So um, I want to kind of tease these things apart. So on one hand, you know, I think that the, the bylaws is, is largely fine as, as it is. Um, but I, I propose, um, you know, and, I, and I'm, for risk of disappointing people, I propose that we, 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 we table the, the, the movement from 1.25 to 1. And we really look at uh, developing the right tool to answer the concerns that exist in this community, which would, would, would be uh, a Heritage Protection Act of some kind, a Heritage Protection Bylaw of some kind that has teeth in it to protect what we're looking to protect in this community, to protect the look and feel of our community so that, that we have a mechanism uh, to respond to the concerns that we're hearing in the community. So what I propose is that we would, we would let the bylaw go through as is except for uh, the reduction in parking from 1.25 to one, table that for the time being, work on establishing a, a heritage protection bylaw that can allow us to do what we want and then, and then bring that parking minimum back to the table. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hurdle. Uh, just full disclosure of council, Councillor Hurdle and I actually had a conversation after, and uh, I, I tend to agree. If you look at it as parking, it really isn't about the parking. It's about when you remove a bylaw, what does it mean to, to changing your downtown? If you look at that particular zone, there's virtually not a whole lot of opportunity to develop. What you'd be doing is looking at adding another story to an existing building, or you'd be looking at a way for a developer to look at one of our buildings and say, it'd be easier to rip it down and put up a tall, thin three-story building because now I can meet the parking requirement. So really it's not necessarily to Councillor Hurdle's point, just about the parking. It's also about, um, it's been one of the ways that the town has preserved heritage. So um, I, just to echo what he said, because he actually opened my eyes because that, that was what I was feeling uh, is he's proposing that we do come back at a later date with the change to one but it's when we have the proper heritage protection in place to make sure that we're not making it an easier solution for people to rip down buildings, to put up tall, thin buildings. And that, that's, that's, that's where the heart of it came, where we, we found the common ground, I guess you could say. And uh, I'm glad that he started it off because he, what he said is exactly what I was alluding to. You just said it a lot better. Um, so uh, anyone else have any thoughts on that or your own thoughts independent, obviously on uh, the motion before us? Councillor Blanchard. I think uh, based on what, what you've said uh, and what Councillor Hurdle has said, I, I, again, I was supportive of reducing and dropping it down to 1.0 or one, one parking space per, um, as opposed to the 1.25. I recognize and certainly support the idea of a heritage bylaw. And I, I understand what you're saying in that if we made this change now in the interim, before we have that in place, it potentially opens up the door 
and, and I know there are concerns in the community. So I would support this for now. If, like I said, if we are committed to coming back and making that change to one, to, to one then, then I would be supportive of that moving forward. And again, um, you know, again, working through council, but, but putting that onto our agenda as a, as a, as a priority to do something that needs, it's, it's long overdue in this community, a heritage bylaw. I've heard it a number of times before, before I was elected to council. And I think that's something we should continue to work on. So I, I would be supportive of that. Thank you, Council Blanchard. I think you brought up a good point is I think council, especially the fact that we're having more counselors joining it, I think we do need to label our priorities for the remainder of the year. And um, I, I think that Council Blanchard, Councilor Hurdle, you're, you're certainly uh, making a strong argument that we should actually look to try to get that done for the community before uh, municipal reform happens because there's gonna be a lot of time concentrating on uh, external issues, uh, just challenges that the province is asking us to figure out. Um, whether we want to or not. Um, any other member of council? Okay, I will uh, basically at this point then, uh, Councillor Hurdle, just to be clear, you're amending it, the, the basically the motion to go to third reading with changing the parking uh, places in the, the, the downtown, uh, what's the proper uh, zone, the downtown? The historic business district from 1.25 to uh, you'd like to remain at 1.25. How it's worded as one in here, you'd like it to revert back to the original one. Your worship, your yes. worship. I had a comment beforehand before we did this. Um, sorry, your hand was up. Yes, sorry, I couldn't see it actually. I don't know if it's blending in with your background or not, but it, it yeah, might have see it disappear. Um, so if you'd like to, uh, to go ahead before we get clarification and, and uh, have a have an amendment. I have absolutely no problem with the with the um, amendment that that's proposed, but I would like to have a date placed on the timing for having the heritage put in place. And we're saying by the end of the year, if we can say that we can have a date because I'm really worried that this will all get lost in the shuffle. And I don't think any on council want it to be lost and shuffle. Um, so I would like to see us say that we will have a heritage bylaw in place by October 1 or something like that so that this can be revisited before the amalgamation. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Heenan. I, although I appreciate the comment, unless someone from council sees it differently, I don't think there's a way you can guarantee a date of when that's done because you need proper consultation. and. You don't, we don't really fully understand what that heritage bylaw looks like and what the process entails. I'd encourage council not to set a date on such because really um, you want it to go through the public process, right? So um, uh, Xander has something you'd like to add? Okay, Xander, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to add that. So you can't actually just amend it and go to third reading. That's a substantial change. So you have to, uh, the Community Planning Act require a 21 day notice for a public hearing of objections and then that public hearing and then um, third reading with that change. I know it seems very minor, but it's changing the substance of the bylaw from what was presented at the public hearing. Okay, thank you. I was not aware that I actually myself didn't see that as a as a major change uh, overall because it's actually the one thing we had feedback on, it's actually diverting it to what it was. So I thought it was because it's, well, what it it's just the community planning act says if what you present at the public hearing is changed substantially and substantially means you know things other than uh typos um you know wrong section number if it's actually changing the substance of it and in this case i i would say it is um then then it does have to go through that process again uh with council support i would fully take your advice because the last thing we want to do is uh pass a bylaw that isn't so my recommendation uh, the council uh, would be that uh, instead of amending it, that you'd actually be uh, first before we go to the, the vote would be to probably move to table it and then we come back with first reading and hearing of objections. Is that correct, correct Mr. Govan? You don't need to do first reading. It's just the hearing of objections. So okay. you can, you're still at second reading. Oh, you're just so making it. Got a, you. Yeah. Got you. Okay. Sounds good. So we don't do first and second. We set the hearing of objections and under a month's time, we could pass third reading at that point. Yeah. You're basically having a hearing of objections for that amendment. Gotcha. Okay, so it's not as easy. Um, so uh, basically what we would be doing then tonight is um, let's get consensus on 
Let's get consensus on it. And then if there is consensus, maybe a mover to, or actually what we'd need is someone to move to table it. And then we would work on it in the meantime. Is that correct? We just want to table this at this point. We certainly don't want to defeat it. So table is really our only option. I'm just looking for staff. Or can we set the hearing objections right now? If you give us maybe a minute and a half or just look at the dates, I think we could just build the motion on the fly here to set a okay. second hearing objection. So. Uh, Perfect. Uh, I think everyone caught that on. So just give uh, our team here a minute. They're going to look for a date uh, and then we'll just uh, probably uh, bring that motion forward. Your Worship, it, we could do it like the 7th or 8th on a Tuesday or Wednesday just to get through that 21 day window. Perfect. Um, so we have a meeting scheduled that day. No. Uh, and the first and the Monday would be our regular council meeting. I'm assuming. So we couldn't do it at the same time. It's not within the 21 days. So then we'd have to wait another two weeks if we don't do it the day after. Well, what's, what's council's pleasure? Is there something urgent that the two weeks? I hate to say it. The two weeks is delaying this is going to hold up, I guess, like, otherwise I'd prefer just to do this on a regular meeting night than have everyone come in for a hearing of objection if possible. Sorry, Your Worship, I just want to ask one question. Uh, Mr. Gopin, uh, in regards to the timeline after 21 days, is there a, a time that would need to be met by the Community Planning Act beyond that, or does it just have to be posted for 21 days? And it then just it has to be posted for 21 days, and then you can do third reading right after the public hearing if you want. Can we post it? Can we post it tonight? <laughs> um, okay, so uh, council, what's your pleasure? Would you rather meet on this on its own standalone night or would you rather just hold it for another, at that point, 13 days and do it as yeah. part of a regular meeting? For your worship, we think we can stay after it's one number in the bylaw. We can post it probably within half an hour after okay. the meeting. We'll so let's stay let's, after. So just for clarity, that date would be? The regular meeting, June the 7th. Six. Or six, sorry. Thank you for doing that and accommodating because by posting that tonight, you stop everybody, including yourselves, from coming in an extra night. So I pre we'll try to get the rest done relatively quickly. Um, all right, council. So uh, what I'll be looking for, I guess, would be um, to table this motion and then we bring forward a new motion. Is that correct? For the June 6th hearing of objections. Do I have that right? Or can we just simply amend this motion to say, because it's not really the same motion at all. Can we just amend this motion to say set of hearing objections? Your, your worship, you would have to table the original motion anyways, because uh, okay. you have it at first and second or for the tabling of third. So you would have to, or to move it to third. So you would have to table that motion and you would have to bring up a, a motion for public hearing of objections. Okay, sounds good. So uh, we'll, have to, we'll, we'll table it first before we set the hearing, obviously, in case it passed tonight. So um, I'll be looking for a mover to table the motion from going to third reading this evening. Councillor Neal, seconder. Councillor Hurdle, um, discussion on the tabling. All in favor of tabling, please signify by saying aye. Anyone opposed? Seeing none, that has been tabled. So I'll be looking for a mover to uh, that uh, deems June 6, 2022, as the public hearing of objections uh, for bylaw number Z21 01. Uh, and that would be with the changes proposing 1.25 parking spots versus one. Do I have a, a mover on that particular motion for the hearing? Deputy Mayor Akaji, a seconder. Councillor Neal, discussion on that motion. Sorry, Worship, to be clear, earlier in the meeting, we set 6.30 for the um, hearing of objections about the skateboard bylaw. So are we able to move this to six six o'clock? I know there'll be some challenges for some people. That's doable for you. Yeah. You absolutely could, yeah. All right, so uh, yeah, we'll set it for, I guess the time's important, 6 p.m. Yeah. Okay. Um, so sorry, I had uh, a mover seconder. All in favor of setting that uh, motion and approving it, please signify by saying aye. 
that has been uh, been carried. Thank you, Council. Um, I did expect those two motions to take the longest tonight, but I'm glad that we're able to work through them. Um, at this point, uh, the other one we're going to uh, bring forward after uh, we go to closed session. So I note that uh, there's nothing under new business. So any questions come in uh, this evening, Mr. Knopper? No rush. Any questions from the audience this evening? All good there. Yep. Perfect. Um, so any comments from any member of council? I know we've had a chance to comment quite a bit tonight, but just making sure. All right. So, oh, Councillor Hurdle, thank you. Yeah, and I just, um, uh, thank you very much, Your Worship. I wanted to just echo uh, Councillor Heenan's point uh, regarding making sure that we bring this back to table as soon as we possibly can. It may not be in our best interest at this point to set a, a date, but I'd just like to just remind us all that this is important to several of us uh, to bring this back and so that we, we keep this on top of mind. Perfect, good point. And just uh, for council clarification, because we haven't had to do a lot of it, but any motion can come before council with a mover and a seconder. So um, at any time, if two of you say that we want to bring something forward, it, it does get brought forward. So that's all it requires. But that's a that's a good reminder. Uh, and uh, we'll have it added to our registers as well. So that way it stays as a reminder for us. So at 7.45 p.m., I'll be looking for a mover uh, to go into closed session as per Local Governance Act uh, Section 681J, which is regarding labor employment matter uh, or including the negotiation of collective agreement. Be looking for a uh, mover for that particular motion to go to close. Councillor Heenan, seconded by Councillor Blanchard. Discussion? All in favor of going to closed session, please signify by saying aye. That's everybody. We are in closed session, so we'll get a moment to uh, shut everything down before we begin. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Oh, no, we're, we're done from streaming. This is just, we'll be put out after. Perfect. So. I was going to welcome everyone back that we're still here having fun <laughs> together. Um, all right. So uh, thanks for coming out of closed session. Thanks for the extended meeting tonight, Council. So we are now at 6-2 which is under Councillor Heenan's portfolio. Thank you, Your Worship and Council. It's PED 220506, Subdivision Agreement with Ligard Holdings Incorporated for Victoria Terrace Subdivision. The Town of St. Andrews has been working with Ligard Holdings Incorporated on a subdivision agreement for the development of a four duplex garden homes and two single garden homes for PID 15188543. This develop development will be occurring on an extension of Prince's Royal Street. The development has received variances from the Planning Advisory Committee and the town has developed the agreement based on the feedback from the developer, town planners, town staff and municipal lawyers. And the motion your worship is that council signs into a subdivision agreement with Ligard Holdings for PID 15188543 as per section six of bylaw number 69, subdivision bylaw and I so move. Seconder please. Councilor Hurdle, discussion. All in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. As everybody that has been carried, could I have a motion to adjourn? That is Deputy Mayor Akaji is always seconded by Councillor Neal. Be you there, Councillor Blanchard. All in favor of adjourning, please, please signify by saying <laughs> aye. Everybody, we're out of here. Thanks.